Now, all right, Mihardis, let's take a look at the homework for tutorial four. Basic uh, goal, if you didn't remember, was we wanted to rotate the camera in the world. Right now we can pan it, we can zoom, but we can't rotate the camera, so let's do that. So there are basically three commits to implement this. Camera rotation basic try. So what do we got here? Well, in the camera, we're gonna add something to track the angle of rotation. A little bit of data in there. We're gonna add some functions, getters and setters for that. And when we draw our drawable, when we pass it down the pipeline, we wanna apply that rotation to the drawable. Fairly straightforward. Now, mouse camera controller is gonna actually apply the rotation to the camera based on input. So I'm, I'm doing the rotation with the Q and E keys on the keyboard. Uh, I don't know if I said it in the video, but I'll, pu I'll put that on the wiki. Uh, but you can do whatever you want, I guess. So we need the keyboard. We're going to maintain a constant uh, reference to the keyboard. And during update, we are going to check if Q or E are pressed. And if so, we are going to move the angle of the camera. Now, unlike the, uh, the drag and the wheel click, these aren't discrete events. These are continuous things that happen over a period of time as long as the user is pressing the key. So what we want to do is we want to actually take float uh, dt in here and multiply dt times the rotation speed per second to get how much angle changes over a single frame. So we do that and here we store in rotation speed, a little bit of constant here and reference to the keyboard. And that's it. And then in game.cpp We've got to pass the keyboard to the camera controller and we've got to update now with DT, but everything else changes and remains the same. Now if I create a branch at this point, check it out, uh, we can see what the code looks like after implementing this stuff. So we got our star field, still works, we can still pan, we can still zoom. If we press Q and E, we can rotate the motherfucker. But now check this out, I'm going to try to pan up and down. And I am moving diagonally. Even though I am clearly moving the mouse up and down, the star field is moving diagonally in front of my eyes. This is probably not what you want. So what's going on? Well, it's quite simple, right? If we've got a screen and it's aligned to the axes uh, and we pan up with our mouse, we would want the world to pan down. That's very simple. We would just subtract X and Y. But now if our screen if our view region is tilted in the world, when we, when we press up or we uh, drag up here, we don't want the world to be scrolled down because that's going to look like a diagonal movement in our perspective. We're looking at it, here's our, here's our eyeballs, we're looking at it like this, uh, but it's going to be moving down like this. It's going to look diagonal from our perspective. So when we drag up on the screen, we actually want to drag in the opposite direction, taking into account the orientation of our screen. That's what's going on here. So how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Just a small change, maybe not so small change, to mouse camera controller. A ah, very small change, actually. So all we do here is, you can see that we're doing a bunch of fixing up uh, when this is for the, the dragging, right, the panning. So if, the, if we're engaged, if the mouse is currently being pressed down and we drag, uh, we get the position of the mouse, we get the delta, which is the difference between the, the last position and the current position. And then here we do a little fixing up, right? Because remember, so in screen coordinates, Y is flipped, right? Uh, and X is the same. Now we want to be subtracting our delta. So, the flipped Y is actually good, we leave that, but we have to also negate the X, and we do that here, and that fixes the disconnect between the screen coordinates and the math coordinates, because our mouse movement is actually uh, using screen coordinates. And here, we scale the amount of movement based on our camera zoom rate, and so that means that it tracks perfectly with the movement on the mouse instead of being different depending on what zoom level you're on. So that's good. A little bit of fixing up depending on the differences between coordinates and some transformations that our camera is applying. And we just want to add one more fix up here for the transformation of rotation. So the basic idea here is if we have some screen here and it's being rotated by some angle and we drag up on the screen, we want to rotate 
that dragging vector by the same angle that the screen is rotated at, and then when we do our subtraction, that will move the world in the correct direction. So dragging up will make the world look like it's moving down with respect to our window. So we just do, after we've uh, fixed up delta here, then we rotate it by the negative of the camera angle to undo that transform. And if I create a new branch, rotcam2 here, and I check it out, now we can see we can drag, it's good. You can dance if you want to. You can rotate, and then if you drag up and down, it's still moving in the expected direction. Now there's one last problem here. I want to bring your attention, let's see here. Look at this star here. Watch as I drag it out of the view. It disappears, right? It's disappearing. It's back. It's gone. But it shouldn't be gone. It should still be visible here. Why is that? Well, look here. We've got this dank, dark region here. We've got a little bit of a dark region here. Uh, maybe one here too. It looks almost as if our clipping rectangle is rotated wrong with respect to our window. And that's sort of true because we, we've rotated our window, but our clipping rectangle calculation is still aligned to the original XY axis, and that's no good. So just a little example here, a little diagram. We've got the uh, stars, they're blue. This is the original uh, clipping rectangle without the rotation taken into account. So it's going to clip, it's going to keep these guys and that's good, but it's going to it's going to uh, discard all the other stars, not going to draw them. And for example, here and here, where stars should be appearing on the screen, they're not going to appear on the screen. Now, the way you could fix this is you could take your clip, your original clipping rectangle, rotate it to be like this, and then clip the stars to this rotated rectangle. But clipping to a rectangle that is not aligned to the axes. That is difficult. We don't want to do that because I don't want to do hard things. Now we notice that if we rotate, if we rotate this uh, rectangle around in 360 degrees, 2 pi, uh, what you're going to get is, well, take the center to a diagonal, that's the radius, draw a circle of that radius, and this is the circle of stars that could possibly be within the viewport for any rotation. So no matter what the rotation is, outside of this circle, stars will never be in view. So I'm going to start, I'm going to use this circle. This is the minimum bounding circle for any rotation of our viewport. And then I'm just going to generate a clipping rectangle around this circle. So doing this, you're obviously going to fail to reject, fail to reject some stars that are outside of your clipping rectangle rotated. But that's fine, you know, we're still rejecting most of the stars out here and we're only drawing some few unnecessary ones. And this has the advantage of being very simple to do. So on the camera, I include chillymath.h for some reasons, I guess. And here, what I'm doing is I'm calculating that diagonal, which is just going to be, you know, Pythagorean theorem here. Square root of half the screen width times the zoom, uh, plus square root of half the screen height times zoom, take the, the square, of half the screen width scaled by the zoom and plus the square of half the screen height scaled by the zoom take the square root of that that is the length of your diagonal that is your circle and then you're going to create a rectangle that just has the dimensions of that diagonal and that rectangle will be guaranteed to contain all the visible stars regardless of the rotation so let's zoom out here Let's rotate by approximately 90 degrees. Don't know how I'm going to do that. Probably like this. No, 45 degrees. Yeah, that's good. And as you can see here, stars are not disappearing in a weird fashion. They remain as long as they're actually on the screen. And that's a good thing. This is the end of the uh, star field, by the way. So there you go. There is your, ro your rotation. It's all good. It makes me happy. Hope it makes you happy. It's good stuff. It's math stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more advanced C++.